and yeah. uh, being kind of a dirt bag, but also having like an interesting existential point of view on it where it's like, well, you know, fuck you, the sky, yeah. fuck, fuck everyone. <laughs> the shit that makes you secretly laugh, yeah. you know, when you're in a situation like this is fucking absurd. And then you realize that other people do go write a write a payday advance check to go pay off another payday advance check. <laughs> like a lot of people do that. Well, that was I mean, Street Fight kind of started because like he. I had never heard anybody so honest about their finances until I met him. Me and him were very honest with each other about, okay, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I re he told me stories about, you know, parking his car in a different spot every night so the repo man couldn't get it. Yeah. And <laughs> when I first met him, he was driving the shittiest car I've ever seen. Oh, hell yeah. We got to talk like <laughs> comedy cars. <laughs> yeah. Grand Amps. <laughs> the, the official car of Street Fight Radio is the Grand Am. Because <laughs> every poor person has had one thinking <laughs> it was going to be... The, the ridges on the side? Yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. they all think it's going to be a reliable car. Every Grand Am I owned, I was like, well, finally, I got a car that's reliable. And it's it's like it breaks down every two months like clockwork. Yeah, it's someone that's like goes to a buy here, pay here lot and they're like, now Penny's going to be able to go to college and save the family. It's only going to cost us $200 a week. And you're like, no, do not leave the lot with that. I paid one sixty seven every two week for a 97 Grand Am in 2006. Oh my God. And that fucking thing, when I bought it, had three broken engine mounts. <laughs> when I bought it. I think it was in Katrina. I, somebody had told me to like look up the VIN number. It was that, in Hurricane Katrina. Yes, somebody had told me to look up the VIN number of the car because like buy here, pay here's yeah. were selling cars from from Katrina that they salvaged from Katrina, and the place I went to buy it first of all. I'm like, uh, well, you know, uh, what kind of, they're like, what kind of car are you looking for? I'm like, one that doesn't break down, preferably. <laughs> and they were like, uh, we found this Saturn for you. We, Go and give it right, a test first drive. First of all, if you're buying a car and they say, we found this, <laughs> red flag. Right and there. we take it for a drive, and, and I'm like, this car is great. This is the best car I've ever seen. I will take this car. And they're like, that'll be $367 every two weeks. And I said, I, uh, that's not in my budget. And they're like, actually, we've been looking at your budget. And <laughs> if you quit smoking cigarettes and quit eating fast food, you could afford this car. And I was like, no, I can still, I'm not going to do those things. Well, so. then what am I going to put in the driver's seat foot part of the car? <laughs> so they ended up like whittling it down to this 97 grand dam and every time i just had a kid and my wife's driving this thing and like every time it went to a light it would stall and it was like 70 percent whether it was going to start again <laughs> like it was like okay it will start most of the time but sometimes it won't start then i'd have to go out and pick them back up and bring them home and we found out it's because the engine was just like wobbling <laughs> around inside the car because there were three broken engine mounts and i took it back to the buy here pay here and they were like oh uh it, there's three broken engine mounts that's the whole problem we, we can fix that for two thousand dollars and i was like oh great well, i don't have that money <laughs> so uh the grand day and then he had grand dams when he was I growing grew up, up in grand dams yeah so, like it was ju we just we want to do like a gumball rally one of those rallies where you race across the country we want to do it in cars under five hundred dollars <laughs> yeah Oh, fuck. I love it. I used to have a Ford Focus that I just drove into the ground, which, the you know, not that bad of a car, but the part of being poor is something breaks and then you can't afford to fucking fix it. And then that like exponentially compounds the problem and <laughs> you get a ticket and you can't afford to pay it. And then you're driving with a warrant out and the whole fucking thing just turns into this Snowballs. crazy yeah. mess or whatever. So like after a while, I just, just was like. This car is not coming back from where it started, you know. It this is I'm just not gonna put anything into it. And so like somebody knocked off one of the um the rear view mirrors, it was on the passenger side, but like when you break it off, it's still connected by like this cord. So it's just hanging. <laughs> yeah, I've seen those. And then like when you would go up on the highway and it would get caught in the wind, whoever was sitting like shotgun would just be having a nice fine time, not really thinking about the fact there's no mirror out there, and then it would just be like 
whoosh, like it would start <laughs> it, like uh, Twilight Zone. There's something on the side of the plane kind of shit would happen. It would start banging on the window next to them and scare the shit out of them. <laughs> I drove in a, a car with this guy named uh, this guy named Ronnie when I was growing up. He was driving us around and we were like smoking weed. And uh, it started raining while we were driving, and he made the person in the passenger seat lean out. He leaned out one window, and the other guy leaned out the other window with towels and went like this to clean the, to do windshield wipers. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I well, so like I got got a call center job, was making like eleven dollars an hour with like thousand dollar bonuses. So I was immediately like, well, I'm gonna just go get a really nice car. I sign up for the loans, all of the bonuses go away. All of a sudden, they want the money. I'm not paying it. Then, like, they're going to take the car. And I'm like, I mean, I need the fucking car. (laughs) So I parked it. Like I said, I used to park it in different lots. (laughs) After that, I had, like, $800 that I could get. And I was like, Dad, I need a car for $800. He got me a car. Fell apart six months later. I ended up with this Toyota Tercel that I drove until it just threw a rod and blew up on me. That's another classic shitty car. I yeah. went to bikes. I just went to bikes after that yeah. and stopped fucking with cars because <laughs> I had to just bought them out of the. I just bought them out of the whole thing. Like I couldn't be responsible enough to keep a car in line. Yeah, yeah. it's like car. Like uh, one of the one of the big big picture goals of our show is to like hopefully someday if we're making enough money and we can figure the insurance we've found out that the insurance on this is a lot but we want to make a garage that has all the tools that people can come to and fix their cars and that mechanics can kind of volunteer their time to fix people's cars because if you're broke like that is the albatross around your neck. The car yeah. is the thing that kills you every time when you you have to come up with eight hundred dollars to get your car fixed. You, like you never have eight hundred. I never have eight hundred dollars to just spend on something. Yeah.